All right, so first up in section 9.5 for us is going to be about um, parametric representations. in 3D. And this is going to be a way that we kind of use functions to give us coordinates in the space of three dimensions. And so just like let's call back to the idea of functions that you probably uh, remember from other classes. So you should be familiar with y equal to f of x a function. And what that does is it, um, it assigns unique values for every input of x. And it gives those values to y. So like y equals x squared is a function that passes the vertical line test. You probably learned about this a couple classes prior to this one. Um, now what we want to do is think about functions that tell us more than just y, tell us x, y, and z all in 3D. So a set of equations is going to be given by x equal to f1 of t, y equal to f2 of t, and z equal to f3 of t is um, a parametric equation for coordinates x, y, z that you could plot in 3D. And the reason it's called parametric is because it depends on parameter t. And usually you'd say that t has some kind of bounds. Um, maybe t could be between 0 and 10, and then you would end up with a curve that covers all the points described by those equations. And so if we wanted to go ahead and do an example, um, this is from example five in the textbook. And we're going to look at a curve given by x equal to t squared minus 9, y equal to 1 third t. And we're going to look at 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2, I guess. Um, that's going to be our set of equations for right now. And if we take t equal to 0, everything here is kind of stuff that you already know how to do. So if x equals t squared minus 9, and I tell you t is 0, then you could go ahead and say, OK, when I plug that in, I get minus 9. And if you do y equals 1 third t, and I tell you t is 0, then you could do 1 third times 0 just gives me 0. And so this tells us that at t equals 0, the coordinate given by this parametric equation puts us at minus 9, comma, 0. We could go ahead and keep doing this. For t equals 1, um, t squared minus 9 gives us 1 minus 9. That's minus 8. And y equal to 1 third t just gives us 1 third times 1, a third. So that's at the point minus 8, a third. And then we'll continue on to that last value I put in this interval we're thinking about, t equals 2. x equals um, t squared minus 9. That's going to be 2 squared minus 9. 4 minus 9 is minus 5. y equal to a third times 2 is just going to give us, oops, Sorry, I got ahead of myself. I was trying to be very deliberate and write down every single step this first time. Uh, one third times two just gives us two thirds. And so that point is minus five, two thirds. 
So this equation kind of gave us a, a recipe almost to follow to get all these different points at different times. And then if we wanted to, we could go ahead and plot what this looks like. Um, I can't really write straight lines ever. At and at. Okay, cool. So my x-axis, I need to get to minus 9. So I'll call that minus 10, minus 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four. And then up the y axis, I have to get up to two thirds. So I'll go ahead and say that's one, one third, two thirds. One being three thirds. All right, that was a trial. But the first point I drew was at minus nine, zero. That was when t equaled zero. Second point at t equals one was at minus eight, a third. So say that's about lining up. t equals one is right there. And at two, I was at minus five, two, three, four, five, and up to two thirds. So right there. So those are the three different points I just calculated from the parametric equations. And what this is saying that um, kind of as t goes forward, maybe you imagine that being time as time goes forward, we start from here and we move forward towards one, forward towards t equals two. And then we could keep following this curve for more um, times t if it wasn't for the fact that our um, bounds actually end at t equals two exactly. So this curve actually goes like that. Well, it should go through the lines. There we go. That's our curve, um, a visual representation of it. And then there's one last thing that you can do with a parametric equation, which is maybe if you're thinking ahead, I've gone ahead and plotted something in the xy plane. So this has a regular function definition like you're used to saying y equals f of x. And if we want to uncover that, all we have to do is go back to our equation. So to recover y equals f of x, solve for t in terms of one equation. then plug into the other. So for example, um, I've got y equals one third t. So that tells me that t is equal to three times y if I just move this one third over to the other side. And then my other equation was x equal to t squared minus nine. So if I plug in t equals 3y, I've got x is equal to 3y squared minus 9. x is equal to 9y squared minus 9, just distributing that squared. Or y is equal to the square root of mm, 1 ninth times x plus 9, like that. And if we kind of went to a graphing calculator or something, we would get the same shape, just not for the restricted from 0 to t to 2, um, because that information about what t is is lost in this form. And the reason I did this little exercise right here is because your first couple web works are going to follow that. So just remember how to do this for the first couple web works in your homework.